Hey there. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. What's the word? The word is uh, that it is Tuesday. That's all I got. That's all you got. That's all I got. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just happy I remembered what day it was. To be honest. I know. I feel like I, I've been I've been telling everybody. I feel like I'm in a time space vortex. I cannot be relied upon to urgently respond to anything because I'm not even sure what day it is. Right. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> You're not the only one. I don't think either one of us are the only ones. No, I think we're all in that together. Yes. I think the chat can attest to that. Hi, yeah. everybody. Um, so kind of just to kind of intro, um, I'm sure a lot of the people in here come following you, but uh, talking to Courtney with uh, Acme Real Estate, also the author of Break Up With Your Rental. Correct? Yes. Um, so thank you for joining me. Uh, I want to kind of keep it brief. I don't want to take too much of your time or anybody's time. But the main reason I wanted to get you on here was obviously because of everything that's going on right now. It's a very strange time that none of us have really had to navigate before. And I kind of wanted to get your insight, uh, ask you a few questions. Anybody that's watching, if you want, if you have questions, we'll, we'll try to answer those as well. Um, but kind of how to navigate this time. Um, not to put it all on, on you. But uh, but if you have some pointers on you know what you guys are doing and how to navigate it, and I got a few questions I'll ask, but I'll let you get going first. Oh sure. So um, so Acme and and me in general, I'm very intuitive. I move um, I move with what feels right in my gut. So like right whenever everybody started sheltering in place, I noticed that a lot of businesses were sending out updates like from the federal government and like constantly sending posts and emails and updates. And I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not looking to Whole Foods for my COVID like <laughs> updates. Right. So right away, I started to feel like for us, we needed to keep our conversation around COVID really specific to our industry and how it affects our clients very specifically. So I've laid off a lot of the kind of, um, you know, obviously like the medical updates sure. and even the disaster relief stuff is like very nuanced and you really need to speak with your accountant in order to be able to navigate it, the PPP program and all of these kinds of CARES Act related things. They're so specific. I don't feel like I, I'm an authority on it. And I, and so my job is just for our internal purposes to make sure that the agents know what sites are available inside our real estate industry to be able to get access to the kinds of programs that are out there. But honestly, it's every day the game changes. So from a brand point of view, we are continuing to stay on our game with regard to promoting beautiful listings and really high quality design. We have a few silver lining posts. I've done a few kind of silly TikToks and Instagram posts and that kind of thing just to just because we have this time together and I'm usually so all business. I feel like I'm so business business that I don't I don't let people get to know me really quite personally, I feel like on social media. So I wanted to take an opportunity to do that. But it's it's definitely from a from owning a business point of view, I think you have to tread very lightly on how you want to interact with your public. Um, it's a delicate thing and you don't want to come off tone deaf. So that's another thing that I've noticed is that people who are in my industry, for example, really work like you can still buy, you can still sell. It feels a little tone deaf to me. So I'm like, yes, if you have to buy or you have to sell, there are mechanisms for us in our industry and we can make virtual tours happen and we are putting uh, listings active and, and creating ways of showing that are not human to human. So it's very, um, in my opinion, it's not the ideal because we're so tactile. Like Acme is a brand ab about this sensation of home. So it's difficult to say like the virtual tour is gonna do it. It's not like you need to get in, but we can't be there because we don't wanna jeopardize the health and safety of our, of our family and our clients, you know? Sure, definitely. Yeah, that's that's definitely some um, good points, especially the tone deaf part. I've seen it myself. A lot of companies uh, in different different markets, not just real estate, don't seem to be 
it's almost like you're you're not acknowledging the current situation and, right. and pivoting. You're just doing what you're used to doing, which can be, I think, have more of an, a, detri a detrimental effect than it would for good. Yeah. Um, and with regard to real estate, look, there's no shortage of inventory. The buyers who are qualified are still hungry to buy. So I feel optimistic that when this shelter in place is over and with the correct precautions, we are going to get uh, back to a very healthy market very quickly. Now, that said, the financial markets are having to adapt as well. And that those things change on a daily basis. Jumbo loans change on a daily basis. The, how the federal government is handling certain things is um, will have an unpredictable effect, shall we say, sure. potentially. But my in the past, I would say my experience says that the federal government typically does some kind of a stimulus whenever the real estate market is suffering. So there's going to be some kind of incentive to keep it, to get it back healthy again. So I, I have no doubt that we're not going to let it all crash on real estate. And these conditions are so different than sure. 2008 that it's like, yeah. you know, apples to oranges. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Hi, Jason. Um, hi Laura. Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, that takes me kind of to a question that I had in kind of buyer seller habits. You kind of yep. mentioned the the buyers and sellers are going to be there. Have you seen a change in how people are handling either well, either absolutely. side? A hundred percent, of course. We we are still opening escrows, so we opened like six escrows this week. So there are buyers who are comfortable and in fact are even uh, like opportunistically like maybe I can get a deal or maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe uh, I'll be in less competition because our market in Los Angeles is so strong yeah. that before this started, almost every house has multiple offers and buyers are starting to feel like priced out of areas where they want to be. So if you're a high, high risk tolerance kind of buyer, there's still so many opportunities for you. So our buyers are steadfast you know so we have aggressive buyers who are totally down to do the unusual showing instructions and the buy off the virtual tour and all of that kind of thing and then we have our like a slightly less uh risk uh tolerant people who are just prepared to wait they're like we've got our prequal we're ready to go we're just gonna wait until it feels safe to go out and tour and go to open houses and whatever and then we're ready to go. And I know they are. And a lot of them have houses to sell as well. So in reality, we're holding a lot of inventory until after shelter in place um, is lifted, of course. You know, Acme, we, we specialize in renovation resale, even though we work with a lot of different regular home buyers and sellers too. But part of that is, um, is creating like marketing strategies that work and transforming um, neighborhoods and that kind of thing. So we are sensitive to, um, you know, we're sensitive to, I'm just like reading the question. Yeah. We're very, <laughs> we're very sensitive to making sure that our sellers and our buyers are, are in our, in the way that we market and in the pricing, our understanding of the changes that are happening. So there are changes to the marketing strategy that have to happen uh, when we're selling during this time. And I suspect even just like a little bit after as the market recovers. Somebody asked, um, Acme seems to be really focused in on community during this time. Has this time brought you back to your core values like community? 100%. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely feel like just taking a breath and having this like kind of mandated quality time with the family, home cooked meals, spending time with my kid, you know, and really thinking about the business of my business and what it is that we, we are and who we want to be in our community is, is something that, you know, in the day to day hustle, we don't always take time to do. And so absolutely 100%. The first thing I know, I noticed about myself because I've never suffered a pandemic before is that I care more about the health and safety of my clients and my agents than I do about the money. And I'm like, if, you know, because we have buyers, we're like, we got to get out there. We got to see, them. we really want you to tour. And I'm like, no, we can't do that. You know, we're not going to do that. So it's important. It's important that we also understand that number one is our safety. And we are holding fast to making sure that we're not compromising the safety of our agents or of our clients and just to, to be in the hustle, somehow taking advantage of this. 
Sure. Plus, we understand that there are people who are being impacted. So I'm not taking it lightly either. It's not like, like there is somebody on, I'm on the board of, of, of the, the board of directors for the Greater Los Angeles Association of Realtors. And, you know, there are people that we all know in, you know, in our like community that are getting sick and thank God recovering. But, you know, so we don't want to be the ones that are out there like it's business as usual, you know. It's very important that we be sensitive to what's actually happening. But again, Acme, we've always been the kind of uh, brand that can navigate changing waters. I started the business during the downturn. You know, we opened in 2011. We weren't even recovered at all from 2008 at that time. And so I really do feel like when you're innovative and creative and you're listening to what the market needs, there's an opportunity for growth and restructuring. So it's an, it's all, there's always an opportunity and possibility to move through changing circumstances. And I, I actually, I, I love that. That's that part I love. It's a good challenge. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I know that's one of the things that had always drawn me to Acme was the way you guys go about things. Thank um, you. The fact that you're more of a boutique real estate agency is nice, but it, it, you guys always carry yourself different than what I'm used to seeing. So that's Thank always you. been something nice. Um, yeah. So to, to that point, like we've been spending, we have these, we're, we're big on cross promotional opportunities. And so we've been spending this quarantine time to um, work on our labels. We're doing a, you know, Heretic is the brand that did the goop, uh, candle uh -huh. the vagina candle yeah. group so we're doing a, a promotion with them where we've created a candle that's an acne by heretic candle um nice. and i'm excited about that yeah, so we've worked exciting. on the labeling and all the product stuff there we have a streetwear line we're creating like <laughs> uh, just a cute a cute streetwear line and we're opening an office in west adams so we've been picking fit and finish getting the cabinets ordered you know getting all the the details, uh, you know, really ironed out so that sure. whenever the shelter in place is up, we're off and running. So we're super, super excited about taking this opportunity to focus on the things that we can do from home that are exciting things. And yeah. it's more efficient actually working on these cross promotional marketing things from home for sure. Yeah, that's definitely really cool. Now, you had mentioned um, coming out of this kind of coming out running. I was yeah. going to ask if there's a plan and if you have a suggestion for other agents or even other business owners, it's, it's kind of weird navigating this, but then there's also when it ends, what do you do after? What do you do? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that the, the key piece of all of this is to figure out what lessons have been learned from this. Like for example, I've been fighting for years to have branded virtual tours that we create you know, because people choose us for our branding. So I, I, I really want our Acme branded virtual tour to be the thing that appears on Truly a Redfin and Zillow, for example. Mm -hmm. And now we have that as a result of this, which is bizarre, but you know, I'll take it. So <laughs> yeah. I think that there's, there's more we can do there. And if we really can perfect the virtual transaction, I think that that gives us an opportunity to close more deals with out of town buyers or even out of country buyers. So right now, Acme, we have all of our offer management on a blockchain backend, which is pretty new to a lot of, of real estate companies. Most people don't take their security that seriously just yet, but I think it is the future. So we make sure that our, our sellers have access to every single offer as it comes in. They know every single offer is being presented. It's in a secure environment and the entire transaction can be completed. All the documents can be completed inside the blockchain uh, back end. So for us, the idea of having um, notaries and electronic closings all happen within that protected and secure environment is really exciting. So I think we're learning what it is we can and can't do in person, which is most likely the future and will ultimately lead to more access for buyers and a more smooth and secure process for sellers. So that that part I, I love. So I think we need to think yeah. about what we can take from the tech, from the tools, from the, um, you know, the inventions. I'd be happy to never do another Zoom meeting myself, but whatever. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so over yeah. it. Um, yeah. But, you know, we take those things with us and we can apply those to our businesses. But then also, you know, I think it's really important um, for us to, like we were talking about before, get back to our core values mm -hmm. as a company and make sure that we are being sensitive to whatever the impact is. 
as opposed to just jumping out and, and, and just straight hustling because most likely we're going to know people who have lost people and, and people's, uh, you know, careers might have changed. And so it's not going to be business as usual right away. I think the inventory will be there and the demand will be there, but I definitely, I think we need to be sensitive and, um, forward thinking about how we can, uh, navigate with our clients a changing what will be a changing market for a while until the dust settles. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, let's see another question here. Do you see the potential of virtual transactions to also enable disaster capitalism? Disaster capitalism, like ambulance chasing, but the real estate version. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think that whenever disaster strikes, there are um, people who can't pay their mortgages and, you know, ultimately run the risk of losing their homes. Um, I do think one good thing is that we have had some effort on behalf of the, on the federal government's part to allay those concerns. I know in California, we, our, our governor has really um, tried to make it easier on renters and make forbearance a little bit easier. However, the forbearance is the problem with the secondary market right now too. So it's people are taking loans, closing them, and then asking for 12 months deferred payments. So it's kind of like causing a little bit of a unexpected consequence. Yeah. The bottom line is you can't stop a willing seller from selling to a willing buyer. So we can't artificially inflate prices. The prices are determined by supply and demand. I can only truly speak to the market that I serve. That's what I know the most intimately. And in LA, we have for a few years had a housing crisis, they say. So the rental prices have gone up and the price of housing has gone up. However, the loan programs make it easier for buyers to buy. So we do have an opportunity that I would encourage people to take advantage of so that you're never in the position, you know, so you have like a leverageable asset and you are building equity so that if disaster strikes in the future, you have something you can pull from. Right. You know, I prefer real estate investment to 401ks because I know that I can live in my investment. You know, I can, I can take money out or put money in. I can improve it. I can resell it when the market's high or I can, if I have, God forbid, just get rid of it and take my money out, then I can do that, you know. Also, I just have something I can use to really like uh, leverage, leverage my yeah. debt. Yeah. And so I think I can't, I don't know what's going to happen in other parts of the country that are going to be affected by like disaster capitalism. I, I think I think if the seller wants to sell and the buyer wants to buy, there's nothing we can do. But I do think that we're not going to see that kind of thing happening in this round because the conditions that caused that the last time are not there this time. Right. This is really like, for example, once shelter in place is up, you know, hotel employees are going to get their jobs back. You know, like cooks are going to get their jobs back and the cleaning, like the, the people who work, in all of these industries that have been laid off are going to most likely right. get their jobs back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a different so. scenario than what we experienced in 08. hundred percent different. Yeah. And in fact, when recession happens, it's not always bad for the real estate market. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the real estate market survives recession very well. Sure. And I always say to people, like, if you look at the course of history and events that have altered um, our you know, our societal changes over history, you can still say you, you buy um, you, 1971 and you sell in 1999, you're going to make a profit. The key to it all is holding on. So I do think since the last crisis, banks and the federal government have been helping people hold on, which is why we aren't seeing so many foreclosures. We aren't seeing the kind of like, you know, no equity loans and that kind of thing. Right. Um, I had a question, I lost it. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to jump in there. Um, now, I know we've kind of touched on it as far as... Um, hey, Jessica Jordan. Being cognizant of what's going on and stuff. 
Yeah. Has marketing changed for you guys? A hundred percent. I know you guys, so, you said you uh, try to, you try not to, you know, force feed stuff. So, so how has that changed? How have you had to pivot your marketing? Uh, so we have taken advantage of the coming soon feature on the MLS. So right now okay. our MLS has suspended days on market count for new listings, which is great, except yeah. that Trulia, Redfin and Zillow are still having a count on there that says days on Trulia, days on Redfin, um, you know, so, and, we all know that the longer it looks like it's sitting on the market, the more desperate buyers think the sellers are to sell. So sellers lose an advantage. Yeah. So the MLS has a coming soon feature and allows us to market to other agents prior to putting it active on the MLS. And then there's also no, no day count. So that's one way that the marketing has changed. It's almost like pre-marketing. Um, so that is happening. Um, also, our virtual tour scenario is getting a little bit different. So virtual tours, I personally am not like a huge fan of Matterport. I don't like seeing things in this bizarro, like three dimensional or like zooming <laughs> through, like pushing buttons. I don't know who likes to see a house like that. I'm tactile. Like I want to smell it. I want to look out the window and see what I see. I want to touch the flyer and smell the candle. And I just... I feel like when you're going to buy a million dollar property or something like that, like you want to be able to experience it like viscerally, you know? Yeah. So, um, so we've been very careful to, um, to continue creating aspirational marketing, which is what we're so known for shooting beautiful photos and using drone imagery to capture some of the view stuff. Like we have a, a project in Eagle Rock right now called Arla, which is a mm -hmm. single family small lot community of 38 homes with incredible views, like, and it's mid construction. So the, the, you know, the drone is cool because you can really see how the project sits in in with the mountain views around it and, and that kind of thing so it is useful and it's something i wouldn't normally necessarily do so now i'm considering doing things <laughs> I, I wouldn't normally do but i don't think anything replaces walking into a property right interestingly though i have agents in my sphere who have had um whole transactions where the buyer like lives in Chicago and bought the house off the virtual tour. The agent is not allowed to go into the house because of LA city restrictions. So the whole entire transaction is virtual, which is very different and very new. So our marketing is, is, is changing in that we're doing kind of like, you know, coming soon marketing. We're doing more exterior drone stuff, more non-human hosted virtual tours and open houses or whatever. Okay. Um, but ultimately I just can't wait till people can come back inside the houses. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's what home is made of, you know? Yeah. It's just not the same experience. Yeah. Uh, um, we have a guest commenting that second time home buyers might be more comfortable with virtual transactions. I think that's totally true. Yeah. And if it's a fixer property or something like that, mm -hmm. which we don't list a lot of fixers, but, you know, we have buyers who are looking at, at virtual tours of fixer properties. If it's a flip that you're going after, you pretty much know. As long as you know the square footage and what's on either side of the property, like the cost of renovation is the cost of renovation. So, sure. you know, and virtual transactions, um, you know, there are different levels, there are different components to it. So I'm finding that a lot of buyers who saw properties that are now back on market, which I think is a result of COVID, they're like, oh, I remember that one. I loved that one. Let's write on it. So all of the work that we've been doing up to this point is now kind of coming to fruition with opportunities, you know, coming back. So that's, that's, that's cool. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not, during this time, I just want everybody to be safe and like right. healthy and, and keep their mental health well, you know, as opposed to saying like, oh, we're just trying to find all these different ways to sell through the crisis. It's like, I just want people to be healthy and safe and get out yeah. of it as quickly as possible. That's and really that's one of the things that I had wondered too, is with everybody kind of slowing down and trying to fit, everything changes so much day to day lately. Yeah. That I had wondered, you know, what the shift was like, if everything had slowed down, if you still see a mix of, yeah, it slowed down, but there's still those that, that really push 
that really want to buy or that really yeah, want to I mean, sell. And there are some people who are, who have to, like people who are literally going to be out of their homes if they don't find a place to move to. Right. So there are certain circumstances where it definitely makes sense to hustle and, and put the energy and attention in. But if you don't have to sell right now, I don't think it's the best time to sell. You know, we can't get 200. We usually have 200 to 300 people through every weekend of our open houses. So with two weekend open houses and a Tuesday brokers open, we probably got 600 buyers eyes on each listing. Right. So I'm never going to get that through a virtual tour. Yeah. I'm never going to emotionally like tie the buyer to the house uh, using a Matterport 3D. Like it's just not. It's not going to happen. So sellers win whenever buyers fall in love. And our job when we're listing is to make the house as lovable as possible, to really deliver what buyers want. So it's really important for us and our success with our sellers to get people in. So that's what I'm saying. Like, if you don't have to sell, don't. Definitely yeah. wait. Definitely wait. And if you, if, but if you're a buyer and you really do have to buy and you find something that you totally love, like, yeah, it's, it's a good time to buy. If you found something that you really love, there's no question. So, so try your best to practice patience. Practice patience, unless the circumstances, like, unless totally. you find that special unicorn, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. um, so we have a question. What about IG yeah. live tours? Have you been using that or FaceTime for people making offers? Yes. So in LA city, we are not really supposed to go to the house at all. In LA County, we can. So imagine I could, and a lot of people have recorded their like virtual tours prior to um, in the, the shelter in place mandate. So, you know, I, I have seen agents taking their phones, doing uh, IG live tours. And what we're doing is we're providing access to the buyers and then we're hopping on and walking with them through the property using FaceTime. So there are company showings with qualified buyers, but, um, but they have, you know, they have the agent presence on the phone so we can show them how to open the doors and they still get the feeling of the house, but we're not violating any rules by being there. So to kind of, to kind of go along those lines, um, I'm sure there's transactions that started before this happened and maybe yeah. closing during. So how do you handle inspections? Just out of curiosity. Yes. Yeah, so our inspectors that we work with have been very um, ahead of the curve with regard to making sure they have a plan. So I, I have um, several inspectors that are following all the protocols. Basically the agent only has to open the door, like disinfect and open the door and then walk away, leave. The inspectors follow all the protocols. They do the inspections then they wipe down every surface that they touched. They're wearing gloves, they're wearing face masks. And then they do uh, for the client, they do the um, assessment uh, virtually. So on a FaceTime chat. And then the agent just locks the door after they've left. So the agent's not going in and sure. the inspectors are not having any, in, you know, you can interaction. Practice your, practice your social distancing. Yeah, social distancing now, for sure. Now we've got another question. This is where I wanted to actually go with this next. So I kind of like this question. Is it better to rent or sell this year? I think <laughs> that it's never a good time to rent, frankly. I, I think you're throwing your money away when you rent. There's no question you're paying somebody else's mortgage. So why wouldn't you just pay your own? But one of the points I make in my book, Break Up With Your Rental, is that if you can't afford to buy in the city that you live in, you should buy somewhere else. Like there are plenty of options across America of places where you can buy and hold an investment property, for example, and it can contribute to your quality of life or your rental costs in the city that you live in. So like buying in Austin, buying in Nashville, Portland, Atlanta, even, you know, like there are places where the markets are um, appreciating really, really nicely steady and you can get a five maybe five hundred dollars a month toward your rental costs here in LA but at least you again have an appreciating asset a leverageable asset if you don't own property you are throwing your money in the toilet when I think about how much rent I've paid over the course of my life 
I mean, it's got to be half a million dollars that I paid of somebody else's mortgages. And that frustrates me to no end. I'm like, why didn't somebody tell me sooner? You know, that's actually why I wrote the book because I was so frustrated. I'm like, wow, it's so easy in a way. If you're thoughtful about it, even if you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, there are plenty of places in America where you can buy a property and have it as an income property and hold on to it for 10, 15 years and let it appreciate. Even if it appreciates $50,000 or $75,000, that's real money that you can use toward a down payment and five to 10 years from when you bought it. Now you're making more money. Maybe you have a partner, maybe your circumstances have completely improved and you can buy the dream house as the second house, as opposed to, you know, thinking that you're going to save pennies from your, your paycheck in order to save up a down payment. Right. It just doesn't happen for most of us unless you're independently wealthy or your parents are gifting you money or something like that. Like I, I'm neither. So yeah, yeah I mean, most <laughs> of us aren't Look, I, right. I come from a family where nobody owned a house. Nobody yeah. taught me anything about this. I had to learn it on my own. And when I did, well, I should say Polly Driscoll, my mentor who I reference in the book, when she taught me about how money can work for you, I applied it immediately. I couldn't believe it. I didn't think it, I could do it. And as soon as, as soon as it um, started working, I was like, wow, why aren't more people buying younger earlier on in their careers so that they can have everything they want like now, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, we had a couple other questions and yes. thank you for the um, compliments on the design and finish at Acme. Appreciate that very much. You know what, Acme, we don't really flip our, we don't flip. We're not, we're not doing the development. We um, teach our renovation resale artists and our sellers how to present the, the listings and finishes the way that the buyers want. So we, we take, like, I've had some flippers come to me that just had like laminate floors and, you know, gray cabinets and, and just like, you know, weird glass backsplashes and stuff like just bad, <laughs> bad. And I'm like, no, no, we have to fix this. And so we've learned over the years how to encourage people to create um, spaces that are more, um, you know, more what we dream of. If we're buying a million dollar house, we want it to look like West Elm. You know what I mean? Like we don't want it to look like a crappy flip that we have to explain to everybody like, oh yeah, I'm gonna change the bathroom, finish it sometime. You know, like nobody wants that experience of home buying. Or you buying. can do so, it when you buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're spending a million dollars. You don't wanna change out the floors before you move in, come on. Yeah. So, um, so what's the last question before Tally J. Taylor joined? Uh, that is, do yes. you think there will be buyers in three to four months? Yes. There will be buyers and they will be able to get a loan. Yeah. There are buyers right now just waiting for this to be done and they are ready to get a loan and the lenders are still lending. So a hundred percent, there will be buyers. There are sellers with inventory. There are buyers who are ready to buy. So I think the market's going to recover mm -hmm. really quickly. We mm -hmm. have had a few buyers who have canceled because they were nervous about like their um, stock portfolios and what's happening with the rest of their investment um, in the background. So, you know, you can't, you have to work, operate at your own level, but that's why I don't trust the stock market. I'm like, oh, what, every time it goes up and down, all of a sudden I lose half my money. Like that's not, that's not the where to put your money. I, I know that like, even when there's a small blip <clears throat> in the real estate market, it recovers, it always does. They're not making more land, you know, land is the commodity. So mm -hmm. in LA, it just is a matter of time. You just wait it out. If it's not the right time to sell, you just like wait it out. Yeah. But if you can buy, I always say buy when you can, not when you think it's the right time. Because if you think it's the right time, probably everybody else does too. <laughs> My most successful clients are buying when it's not the right time. They buy, they buy when, when other people aren't. Yeah. Well, and, and to go along with that point that you mentioned earlier, at least with real estate, something goes south you can get out of it mm -hmm. and instead of losing like you might on the, on the stock. Market. Yeah, totally. Um, Jesse has a question. Would you recommend flippers to list their flips immediately or wait a bit? I, I really don't think anybody should list right now unless they really absolutely have to. It would be, 
it, it, will, it so diminishes the buyer pool and the amount of people that can come and, and tour and fall in love with the property. So I would just wait. Look, it's not gonna be that long. It's just a little, you know, we've, we've been through Christmas markets before, you know, post Thanksgiving real estate markets. We've been through cold weather markets, spring markets where it just rains. It's raining like every day in LA right now. So hosting open houses in the rain sucks too. It's, it's, it's gonna be okay if we just hold our horses and, and you know. Take care of yourself first. Take care of ourselves yeah. and enjoy this unusual bit of, um, you know, time that we have to actually be with people that we love that maybe we don't make that time for in our regular in our regular lives. So I put the sales on hold for just a sec. <laughs> Unless you have a balloon payment for a hard money loan <laughs> and they're not offering any relief to you as a flipper. Then get out. Yeah. Then get out. And you might have to put it on the market, in which yeah. case we'd be happy to help you. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um so if you could give any advice to not not that you haven't given enough already ha. to any realtors out there or even business owners um, on getting through however long it's going to take us and coming out of it. If you have any sort of advice business wise, what would that be? Well, I like we were talking about, I think you just need to audit what your messaging is. Make sure that you are not sounding tone deaf. A lot of members of the general public generally distrust real estate agents for some reason. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I don't know why all so many real estate agents I know are incredible people and, and super committed to community and very much about people realizing their dreams. And I just, I love them so much. So I, I'm not sure where that absolutely comes from, but I have heard and seen comments that when people are pushing too hard to make sales throughout this time, that it feels like doesn't land right, you know, yeah, for, for the general public. So I'd be careful about the messaging. I would make sure that you're not positioning yourself in any kind of liability situation where you're speaking about things that you don't fully understand. Like I was talking about the federal loan programs and those kinds of things. I'm fully aware that I'm not a specialist in that. So I'm just pointing people to the right resources and I'm not taking a, um, you know, I don't want to be the information provider for that. What I can speak to is what I see in my market. So I would also say like, know where you're, you're, where you know what you're talking about so well that you could defend it. And if you're going to speak on things like speak on those things from personal experience and, and, and make your predictions based on real actual experience. And I personally think just make sure whatever you're posting is in good taste, you know, that you're not, um, you know, when this thing started, it felt like a little like people didn't believe it was really happening. And so there were a lot of memes and like kind of goofy things going on. Um, and I think that moment has passed. Yeah. So I mean, having a sense of humor is amazing. And we all want a silver lining. But I just think being really conscious that your messaging is not tone deaf, that it's sensitive, and that it really speaks to your company's values would be the most important uh, pieces of information and use social media. It is it is um, our moment to connect with each other. We'd like to see each other's faces now more than ever. And if you guys aren't listening to D nice night and day, I don't know what you're doing <laughs> because I am on that all day and all night long. I think you saved my life. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Um, property values will be affected. Yes, I think in the very short term, you're going to see property values being affected possibly. I think that's just going to be sellers reducing their list price in order to generate a quick sale potentially. But there's also a ton of buyers in the market. So the buyers are going to push the prices back up. List price is just a marketing price. When you're looking at property value, you have to look at the actual sold price, not what the property was listed for. It always bothers me when I see those stats that are like, oh, this one sold for 10% over the list price. It's like, yeah, but it was listed for 10% under the market value. You know, so don't be misled by marketing price. The list price is a marketing price. When you look at property values, you have to look at sold values. And it typically takes six months for the market to experience a change in values because of some kind of like market shift or increase in interest rates or that kind of thing. So don't be looking for those property values to go down right now. 
what you're going to see, I think, is when we come out of this, sellers who are anxious to sell potentially listing their properties for a little less than they thought they were going to before, just to kind of like, you know, get it going again. Sure. And then more than likely, buyers are going to snap it up. So it's probably going to sell for over asking anyway. And then you'll see the close price is right is right on the nose. So it'll be a temporary, probably small marketing shift in listing prices. But the values, if they go down, I don't think they're going to go down that much. Not here in LA. I can only speak to LA. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't want to keep you all day. I'd love to sit here and answer everybody's questions, but I know you're busy. <laughs> so where can people watching find you on social and online? Oh, so Acme Real Estate, at Acme Real Estate is our Instagram. At Courtney and Lala is my goofy little personal one. <laughs> and um, at Break Up With Your Rental is the book Instagram site. And of course, you can always call me. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on a cell phone. Yes. Um, anything else you'd like to leave? I... No, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, it's no. been really fun to chat. Thank thanks you for everybody doing... for hanging out with us. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank you, Courtney. It's super My informative. Pleasure. Hopefully it helped. I know I learned a lot. So. Oh, good. Um, yeah, then... I'm confident. So I hope that... I hope that bleeds into the ether. I know that we're going to make it through this. Yeah, definitely. All right. Cheers. All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody.